first, we have big breaking news from Capitol Hill tonight on two fronts. Former FBI Director Andrew McCabe is reportedly asking for immunity before he offers testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley wants McCabe, former FBI Chief uh, Jim Comey, and former Attorney General Loretta Lynch to testify when the IG report on the Hillary Clinton email investigation is finally released. On a separate front, Fox News Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is reporting this. A lawmaker telling her that FBI espionage chief Bill Priestap, who oversaw the Russia and Clinton probes, has been very cooperative with congressional investigators. Priestap was also the supervisor of FBI agent Peter Strzok, who bashed President Trump, of course, remember, in several texts. The source says that Strzok played an even larger role than we thought initially in the Clinton email probe and the Russia investigations. Let's discuss all of this now with Congressman Ron DeSantis, a member of the House and Judiciary Committees, uh, House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein, and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Robert Driscoll. Gentlemen, it's great to see all of you. Big breaking news tonight. Congressman DeSantis, where do we begin? Let's start with this immunity um, plea for, for uh, McCabe. Uh, every time you hear someone who's like connected with Trump says might want immunity, it's like, oh my God, you want immunity? You must be guilty. But what's going on here? Well, look, I mean, James Comey said Andrew McCabe stood tall, was just this model leader, and now he wants immunity because he knows he's in jeopardy with his conduct uh, over this investigation, both the Clinton and the Trump investigation. I would not give him immunity. I would make him go. If he's going to plead the Fifth Amendment, then he should plead the Fifth Amendment. But the idea that he should get some type of get-out-of-jail-free card for this um, is not something I think the American people would want to see. Richard. So the president said in tweets about McCabe, lied, lied, lied. He, he personally called uh, McCabe's wife a loser, right? That's a classy move. Um, Richard, we're and, talking it. Let's uh, well, keep I'm it just focused. Saying, I, my, we my have very is, limited time. I want to keep this focused. Well, but the point is, on the why former McCabe... deputy attorney general yeah. wanting immunity. Yes. If he has nothing to hide, if he was above board, if he had permission to release information and to the media, please, why is he asking for immunity? That That's what sentence, you guys and, do to and the and Trump people, And I'm saying people, that last correct? sentence, when the president asked for the Fifth Amendment, please, what you just said, Bring that back. Look, the reason not, is... When is the president asking for the Fifth Amendment? Well, everybody seems to suggest that might be an... Op Look, here's the answer on the case. everybody. If you've got a president who issues pardons willy-nilly has no qualms about asking the Justice Department to go after somebody. So McCabe would be out of his mind not to seek immunity when you've got somebody at the top of the... Basically, who oversees the Justice Department. His own lawyer is saying he's concerned about... His, his client being He prosecuted. should be concerned when you've got the president going after people like crazy. He, but this he, is a... Right. This is a criminal referral, though, that was made by the inspector general. I mean, the inspector general laid the predicate for this, did he not, Richard? I mean, I get it that you don't like Trump. I get it, and that's yeah. fine. There's a, it's a big nation. I'm glad we have all opinions on the show. But this is someone who, in a nonpartisan, consummate professional inspector general, called his credibility right. and his 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 basically said he was prevaricating, to put it very kindly, exactly. uh, on, in dealing with the media. Right. And now he's been asked to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Right. Robert, you can chime in. Yep. You've got a lot of experience on this, and he wants immunity. I mean, that's not the first time someone's asked for immunity, but this is a wild series of developments yep. we've had with a former deputy FBI director. Well, it's a smart move by his lawyer, because if he gets immunity from judiciary, then he's free from prosecution by DOJ, and so you'd rather have a day of embarrassment before a committee than, you know, do time. If, but I think it's, a, it's always a trade-off between transparency um, and justice when congressional committees and DOJ are deciding whether or not to grant immunity. I mean, the benefit to immunity would be he would testify on national TV with no ability to plead the fifth and would have to say everything he knows and everyone would hear it. And uh, I think Chairman Grassley would have to weigh that against waiting to see what happens in the DOJ prosecution, which will take additional months. I think also, does he have evidence? I mean, there's at least some reports suggesting that he may have affirmative evidence that Comey did know about this leak that he, McCabe, has gotten nailed for. Comey said, no, he didn't authorize that. So if he was producing something like that, that may be one reason. But he why always backs up Comey, right? He's always backs up Comey when Comey's... Oh, I think their interests well, interest are diverging now. Well, but now they are. But before, when the Trump, Trump conversation with, uh, with Comey at the White House and... He basically said, yeah, well, Comey basically said to me what he put in his memo to the but file. I, so they 
were they, they obviously on the leak, they were very tight. On the leak, he said Comey approved it, and Comey said he didn't approve it. Yeah. So they're in direct contradiction on that. Yeah, so they've, they've diverged. Let's move on to the IG report. Then we want to go back to another struck issue. This IG report, the president obviously very frustrated. <laughs> Again, I wouldn't be tweeting about why it's delayed, but that's, you know, the president is going to tweet. As he's, he's the president, he's going to tweet. But on the issue of the IG report, why do you think this is delayed? We keep hearing it's going to be out I, any day. That's, that's the problem, Laura. Like, we have a bureaucracy that is just not accountable to anybody. So we had all these major problems, and the Democrats were actually the ones that wanted this report initially. So in order to hold people accountable, if it takes a year and a half to conduct an investigation, then it's just not the way it's going. So I'd say that just the time well, is just too much. what's the point? Like, you know, you need a speedy trial. You need a speedy resolution. Exactly. I mean, and then it's the 500 pages. However, Robert Driscoll, I want to get back yeah. to Richard, too. But, Robert, could the McCabe request for immunity right. have some relevance here in this delay in the Inspector General no, report? No, I think people are overblown the delay. I mean, I've represented people in the situation. When the report's done, everybody who represents uh, someone who's been interviewed in that report gets their little chunk of the report that mentions their client, gets to review it alone in a room and not take it with them, and has about a week to get back with any comments to the IG, who then decides whether or not to take them into account or not. So the fact that it's two weeks after it's done is about on time. I mean, I'd be concerned if it took another week or so, but right about now is about when it should be coming out, in my experience, from when the report is done to when you work through that process. And in this circumstance, there's a lot of high-powered lawyers involved. I'm sure people are billing yeah. lots of hours making objections. Hopefully. A lot of lawyers making a lot of money here. Exactly. And can I say something in support of the congressman? Yes. I also want this report to come out as soon as possible. But I think I have different reasons. One, I think we're going to hear what Rudy Giuliani was getting in the way of information from the Southern District, from FBI agents, which allowed him to basically say before it happened that the second Comey letter was going to come out. Secondly, I think what we're going to see is that Comey, yes, acted inappropriately, but in ways that helped the Trump campaign. He sat on information about the Russian investigation about the Trump campaign and was way out there in ways that way, went over the, you know, broke the rules both in July and in October by what he said about the Hillary email investigation. So I'm with you. I, I, I agree. I hope it comes out tomorrow. What do you guys make of this new uh, text? Well, it's not a new text. It's an unredacted text. Um, and this is a text between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. Now, we learned this today because uh, this was released as part of the 500 uh, pages of text released by the Senate today. And here's what this looks like. It says, you'll get our OCOUNS, lures approved. And uh, just so you know what that is, lures is FBI lingo for spies. So the question tonight, were these potentially sent, these spies potentially sent in to target the Trump campaign going back to December of 2015? And if so, that could be fairly explosive, could it not, Congressman? Because Jim Comey said this investigation began in July, July 31st to be exact, of 2016. That text, again, we'll learn more, and I know the House is kind of not exactly where the Senate is on this, but when you read that text, it certainly appears that they were looking to put more lures into the campaign in 2015. Several people are reporting this tonight. We'll learn more, I believe. But what do we what do we think about that? Well, that was why a, did they redact that word? Exactly. Lures. That, that, that was redacted. that was initially this comes redacted. Out, it's like, oops, it says lures yeah. there. Lures again, lingo. So, for spies. so the question is, why would that have been redacted? Um, is that referring? I mean, Oconus obviously is a foreign, uh, potentially foreign spy. But I think this idea that that Crossfire Hurricane started this on July 31st clearly that's not true because you had Comey, you had McCabe and Lynch deciding not to brief Trump in April when they were supposedly concerned about Carter Page. You had Stefan Halper reaching out to the campaign before then. So this did not just start on the 31st well, of Comey July. Comey testified Comey, in May not, of 2017. And I think, I think, he has, I think he's had his exposure as a result of that testimony. So you're saying he... he I don't think he was telling the truth there. No, so I don't he, think that's true. And would he have... There, any way he wouldn't have known, if this is true, that it started earlier, perhaps in May, when now Bill Priestap, there's another question about Priestap him. Priestap traveled to Explain London. Explain who Priestap is. So he's the head of counterintelligence. Peter Strzok was his number two. Now Priestap basically has said Strzok was really the main guy in both the Hillary and the, the Russia popular. collusion investigations. Obviously, he wanted Hillary to be president. He hated Trump with a passion. Yep. But Priestep himself traveled to London in May of 2016. Um, that was, again, two months before Crossfire Richard, Hurricane yeah. started. And, and again, I'm going to disagree with the congressman a little bit here. What's twisted about this is that at the end of the day, what struck in the F, struck, remember, drafted the Comey letter 
10 days before the election. It was his idea to kind of put that out there. He also said bad things about Bernie, about Chelsea, about Holder, in addition to Trump. The same things that Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz were saying during the campaign. The, the fact is that the FBI, when you look back, helped um, Trump by sitting on the information about him and hurt Hillary by breaking the rules and putting everything Richard, out there. The reason why they put the letter out was, was not a, to would help have been Trump. It was to protect okay. their own behind. Strzok wanted to protect his behind and Comey's behind. That's why they did it. Well, You're right. On July 5th, Comey win. should not have come out and done that. But once he came out and gave the press conference, he kind of had to do the letter. I think the letter actually, was a mistake. Okay, well, and Robert, Robert, Robert handled it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Robert, I, I, on this I, issue of the text, though, right. I mean, again, we're going to learn more. But they redacted the right. word lures. Again, the lingo for spies. The FBI is not supposed right. to use the word spies, but they use that word. Non-contiguous, uh, unidentified yeah. uh, informants. So OCONUS was there, that acronym, and then lures was redacted. Right. Unredacted, now you see what it was saying. Right. That's, again, you get all our lures approved. Right. I love the little smiley face. Couldn't they have used an actual emoji? They had to use that. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it goes on. Well, I think so much of this has to do with, I think the timeline is the most damaging thing for people here because people are using a bureaucratic term when they say an investigation wasn't opened. Well, that means nothing if there was investigative activity going on before the investigation was opened. So even the FBI said, well, some of these contacts from our uh, informants, you know, slash spies occurred, you know, leading up to the investigation. Well, th there's got to be a point, you know, it's kind of like, you know, well, did like, God create the earth? You know, who yeah. created that? Who created that? Who created that? Well, but I mean, somebody yeah. has to approve. Who the, approved the, what? When? In? Okay. Let me just hold on. Remember, this thing was supposed to have been begun, kind of started sort of when that list of Trump foreign policy advisors, national security advisors right. came out. And Carter Page and right. George Papadopoulos, his, their names were on it in the, in the spring of 2016. Right. But now, if this goes back to 2015, again, if, exactly. if, if, what were they worried about? I mean, I mean, the struck, uh, these, they were petrified of Trump. May, who knows? Maybe they thought Trump was going to catch on. And, and one of the, Maybe. One, one of the later struck Page texts in the fall was, POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. So what did Obama know about this, and when was he briefed on this? I don't think he was in the dark about this the whole time at all. I think Obama knew exactly what was yeah, going on. Yeah, can we on. just remember that we've had whole segments on shows like this about the struck secret society, about the struck lost emails. So let's try to figure out exactly... Yeah, I agree. We need to get to the bottom of this. But to kind of, uh, you know... No, assume, I'm, I'm, I'm putting caveats in I, I, agree. I agree with you. But th those are technical acronyms that are used within the bureau those aren't like love love messages between the two Agreed. of them i mean all those you know i'm sure people are fascinated by those too but those those are technical terms so it seems like did you get approval for these lures right and waiting for the answer but there were no spies there was one guy who basically made a couple approaches to people that had been targeted already well, we know, by the cia and the fbi well, right? we know that that it wasn't just carter page right. now the report came out daily New, daily caller foundation that also Stephen Miller was, was invited it? to uh, that same event. What, what else? Papadopoulos, and then they reached out to Sam Clovis, and so. And here's the thing: in the New York Times, when their their big article, they said at least one person. So there is the possibility that there was more than just Stefan Halper who was trying to initiate. These yeah. So contacts. July 2016, the event at right. uh, University of Cambridge. It looks like they were trying to get all the, the nationalists like Miller. I mean, you like Russia, you come over here. Come on, Stephen Miller's really a Russian plant. But I, again, the timeline is important because we don't have documents, do we? We don't have the, we don't have a lot of documents, FBI They're documents. Refusing to produce the documents from that time period before July 31st. Exactly. That's why you're you're gradually right. getting the text. But we let's want remember the documents. when we we heard from Papadopoulos and others that the Russians were trying to get dirt on Hillary. Not one person in the Trump campaign went to the U.S. authorities. Not one. That's a little bad. That's, that's really a bad think, fact. I mean, do you think this Papadopoulos, I mean, this whole, this character right. is just like, he's trolling bars in London. It's like, right. I'm going to go back to Trump Tower and I'm going to be the cool guy because they're going to, I'm going to set up a meeting with Trump. I mean, he's just like the worst person to have in a campaign. Come on. But Alexander Downer, most recently in an interview, he said, I never even heard about emails. I heard dirt. I didn't hear emails. Yeah, that was so, uh, Australian ambassador. Right. That's right. I think we we have to have like the you know the deck of cards in Iraq where you have the the ex, every all faces with every title. Guys, fantastic as always.